Og hej igen. Denne gang skal vi høre om noget så spændende som at være entreprenør i Kina. Men øh, ikke bare entreprenør, at være koldtreprenør. Jeg var så heldig at, øh, at få muligheden for at holde et foredrag på Nottingham University her i Nimbo. Sammen med en af dem, jeg arbejder med herovre. Shannon. Shai, som jeg skal op. Og det gjorde vi så. Det var spændende. Vi havde desværre ikke så meget forberedstid, men øh, jeg synes, vi gjorde et godt stykke arbejde. Øh, så øh, der er ikke så meget mere at sige, at når se det. De første øh, 20-30 minutter, det er Shai's præsentation. Min, den kommer omkring hen ved, jeg tror, 34 minutter. Og så er der jo alt muligt sjov og spas i mellemtiden. Det er der jo, når, når en entertainer han skal lave et foredrag, <laughs> hvis man kan sige det sådan. Så øh, se det, hvis I vil lære lidt, øh, eller hvis I vil lære, hvad en øh, kulturpenør er for en størrelse. Okay, check it out. Og I må gerne skrive ned under hernede, hvis jeg har noget. Vær den første, eller like det, gør et eller andet. Så bare sige hej til os. Ja. Men have en god dag, ikke? Hygge jer. Hej. Perspective, not from a technical perspective of 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 scene manager, right? 
So all of you must be present, must be present in the in, in the team, must be present in the in the cement uh, in the mentoring session, and you should. Uh, if you want to complete an IOB reflection and you must be present, let me sub let us sign off your attendance so that you can complete the IOB session online. You will receive the email asking to do it a week later, a, a week, within one week before after the, each mentoring session. So, how to print it? Prepare print the monthly report. It's very simple, right? There's a one month session. Uh, what after you press right, one month you get a summary of, of the what you've done in this month in Symmetra and then you can bring it, you can review it and then you will get a four pages of report including the profit and loss, this is very important and the cash flow report. All you need is to bring 12 months of report to, to each of the mental session for each team. So this is a screen right, after you press one month here then you will get a summary and then you can print it off. Just as few reminders also, right? Some of the settings about same ventures. Oh, I just realized this another problem, okay? That I, it seems that haven't been solved some of our little way. You cannot get access to the advisor's team, right? When you have the, I feel that the, uh, that I found that there's something wrong with the with the advisory function within Sim Rancher. I'm now asking the our IT service to fix this as soon as possible. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But okay, you can still if you're still not quite sure how to do well in Sim Rancher, right? There is a video tutorial. Tutorial function within Sim Rancher. Do you know that? Do you know that? There's a try, okay? Try to try to learn from the from, try to get help and then you can get help from the tutorial, okay? Learn how to do it yeah, from, from the tutorial function. Okay? And another thing that I need to remind you is that all of you should have received my email last week about that I've booked an extra computer room for you, right? For the for, for running the sim ranches. Right? In I or in total I booked six sections, two in each week starting this Start starting this week, okay? Starting this week, you can actually make use of the computer room to do your same venture. The room is reserved just for your cars, so that you won't disturb others and other room, other certain room disturb you. Okay, feel free to use that computer that computer room to make to do same venture exercise practice, right? It's okay, okay. Just feel free to use it. Uh, well, and, uh, but this, but this is not compulsory. If you think that okay, I want to do it in the midnight, okay, in the computer room, feel free to do that, okay. It's up to you. And also, anything else that I need to remind you? Uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, mentoring session, sim venture settings. Yes, the same setting sim ventures. Please, okay. That I already put this uh, guideline on the on on, on Moodle. Please set the difficulty level to moderate. Okay, I hope you remember. And give yourself ten thousand pounds as a startup money. As ten thousand pounds as a startup money. Okay, and that is for the rest. Okay, you just leave it default. Okay, you don't need to change other thing. But in order to be fair and everything uh, learning and working in a in, in a more or less similar condition in environment, please make sure that you set the difficulty level to moderate and give yourself 10,000 to start up. Okay, that's the things that I need to remind you. And last thing is about the questionnaire. I tried to distribute this questionnaire to you last week, uh, but I received only a half of it, of it. Okay, if you have time, please feel free to have it. Okay? I really want you to know more about uh, uh, to, to how well we perform. You can make use of this sim venture as a way of teaching and learning. So, if you really okay, please please help me to complete this question. I will try to uh, distribute it again later on. Okay. So, the not waste not even more time. So, I will now give the time to the team, I team general and Yan, to to give a, a guest lecture. Thank you very much.
Sharon got to present me, and I got to present Sandra. But we have not been talking. We only present each other as we know each other uh, until now, through our relationship, through our business relationship. So it's going to be very funny for me to listen to Sharon to hear what he has to say for me. And I think we should do the exercise first. Are you ready? The Shannon, you will uh, be in charge of this exercise. And I hope you guys would uh, join in so we get the blood running around the body and we're ready for uh, some learning. So you can stand up if you want to do. Anybody want to do? No? Should we take it or should we go straight to our presentation? So. Okay, I'll do it. No, it's, you do it. it's very good. Great. It's the ice break, especially because. Because uh, we are from different cultural backgrounds, so at the beginning when we work together, we just stare at each other. We have nothing to say. He's too so point of view. We are not only me, my, my I mean, partner are free of uh, him. So we, we decide to do something together to, uh, to, to be an ice cream. It's very easy. Actually, it's from uh, ancient China. Very good for health, especially when you stand use computer for too long. It's a bear, like a bear, like a bear, like this. <laughs> then you can do this. <laughs> then the other direction. <laughs> so this is what we do every morning for the five minutes exercise. Okay, just a more, more, just a little uh, story. Uh, let's go back to business. What we are going to talk about is entrepreneurship from a multicultural background. So first, I'll present Yen. How we know each other? It was a like coincidence. Uh, in 2011, 2011, I searched on the internet. I saw a very interesting video. It's one guy touring the disc and uh, the doing a body roll or something with the disc. I have never seen so cool move. So I just emailed, because they leave an email address at the, the end of the video. I emailed the guy and said, hey, mate, your move is so cool. How can you do that with a disc? And then Ian asked me, it's a long story. Can you have your uh, Skype address? And I just uh, gave, gave her my Skype address. One day, I came back from a date. It was really late, it's about 12 o'clock in the evening. And Yen, like, called me on Skype. Can we have a talk now? Okay. Then we start to talk. And uh, I say, um, we are, I'm in this business, uh, like, disc training for like 15 years. I, I have a very good company, a lot of connection in Denmark, and I travel all over the world to promote my concept. But China is an exception. I have never been to China before. I say, let's, okay, I, I can invite you to China. I have a lot of connection here. We can do a lot of great workshop. And then, next month, he emailed me again. I think I just, uh, I just tried to reply, to be honest. He said, okay, I have booked the ticket. And I'll be in China at the end of this month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I still, I, to be honest, I, I still do not, do not believe uh, that, that is, uh, is we're going to make that um, to happen. And uh, at about uh, December 2011, he wants me to be confirmed we had a plan in China. Then it is the time I realized that the guy really, really wants to come to China. So I start to contact schools and universities to make a lot of workshops. And I sent him the schedule after one week. And uh, I picked him up in Shanghai Airport. And uh, we, we had a very good beginning because we went to here and other universities in Zhejiang province. And uh, we did a, we had a video and show you later. We did a, about a, at least 10 workshops in this province. And uh, we have received a huge success uh, at that time. And um, this is the way we know each other. And then after, and he came, go back to the Denmark uh, at the end of 2000, at the beginning of uh, uh, Christmas, yeah. Christmas, 2011. And, uh, and then we decide to move on. We can start a new business in China. It's about a disc and uh, services, because we are a company made about producing disc. He is 
run a company made about uh, providing services. So I think it's a very brilliant idea if we can work together. This is how we know each other. And uh, okay, this is uh, what I know about Yen. So Yen will introduce me now. Yeah. And it's right now the city contacted me. I get a lot of contacts from around people that ask me to do stuff and make workshops. And also from China, I get some times people that write that you don't need a disc for your content. And Shannon was one of those. I think, ah, okay. You can send me one of your products to me and I will check it out. And he sent some of his products to me. And it sounds strange, but it really takes a lot of knowledge to make a good disc. It's, there's a lot of uh, innovation in the plastic. And they sent me some products. I was, wow. And I asked him, how long have you been doing this for? They said, it was three years. And I was like, wow. I, I know people that have been in the business that are doing it for a longer time and not have so good uh, product there. So I come over here and we start to work together. And I start to learn a little bit more about uh, Shaman. Uh, I know he has a girlfriend. I know he's uh, soon going to be married. I know he can go to this school here. I know him from Hanjo. Yeah. And I know he's uh, very engaged in the, the, the disc sport community in a, in a sport I call Ultimate. Yeah. And he has uh, some very good colleagues, and I also think that his close friends, that's a part of the partnership there. Uh, and then uh, I work with the uh, Yiku sport. And uh, it's a very, they're very engaged in what they're doing. They really want to do. They're really entrepreneurs. They're making, they're breaking new grounds here in China with the uh, uh, upcoming sport. If, if you see in the United States, it's already very established there. So uh, they are the frontier of the new sport here. So that is what I know about uh, Shannon. I think Shannon, he will do his presentation now for Yiku. Okay. Uh, our presentation will be like uh, two parts. First is my part, then we have a short demonstration of what we are doing in China. Then Yan will do the other part, then the other is the QA part. Uh, I think one of my friend Robin delivered one lecture last year. Have you heard about that? Are you? Okay, so I'll skip this part. It's the basic information about our company. Uh, I graduated here from two, uh, 2008. I, I actually the first group of graduates from this campus. When I was in this campus, there's no campus. We were studying in Brandy University for one year, only with only 250 students, but only 200 graduates from this university. Um, so after graduation, then I work in a bank, which is HSBC, in four branch for one one year. Then I uh, spend my whole time in this company. We started coming just after graduation, but we do that. I did that part time. After that, we we did a full time. Um, this is uh, Equal Sports, our company name in Ningbo. We specialize. Supply, specialized supplier for disc sport and also help her to develop this sport in China. Mainly, this sport has three parts ultimate. I think there's an ultimate club in this campus, right? Yeah. There, there was a game last weekend and a lot of foreigners and a lot of party in the Robin Hood. This is the ultimate. This is a 7 versus 7 non contact sport and the other disc golf. Uh, this is very new in China, but in North Europe and the USA, it's huge. Last year, we sold like 10, 100,000 discs, discs to South, South, uh, South Europe, uh, North Europe, especially to Denmark. Denmark, we sold to the one brand called Best Seller. It's, uh, the other, you probably know the other, Jack and Jones. Do you have your, and only. Actually, in Denmark, it's not for clothes only. They, they focus on a lot of stuff. They also have sports product like this. Um, the other is the disc dog. It's for dog players. They have freestyle and distance, com uh, distance competition. Uh, one thing I do want to mention here, I only use the word disc instead of frisbee. Do you know why? I think you know the word frisbee, right? Yeah. yeah. Because Frisbee is a brand name actually it's, uh, for American companies. So in this business, we never use that. Otherwise, uh, they will sue me. 
So I have to use other words instead. Uh, we have like four brands here, actually five. We have one account, Freestyle Frisbee, but because uh, it's new, so I didn't put it in my presentation. This is our mission of the, our company, to be the leading company for disc sport globally. And this is the value. Mm. Our mission promote, promote the physical, fit, uh, physical fitness, sports spirit, healthy lifestyle by providing this player with a quality product and professional services. And this mission is we said like once we start our business in 2008, we follow this from that time. This is um, one picture. This is our team, five members. Um, this is uh, in the middle is uh, Eric. Uh, in the middle, I'm on his uh, right. Right. The other is uh, left is called Sailor. All of us are graduates from this university, so we were very good friends, very close friends. And uh, after graduation, we decided to set up this company because we love this sport and uh, we also love business. Mm -hmm. And uh, now our this is. Uh, since 2008, when we begin, we have a, a lot of distributors all over China. So uh, we can see we made we are doing well. This is our product. The Ultra Pro is our for product for ultimate disc. It is 170 gram, and uh, this the other is a dog disc we call Space Dog. Uh, and last is the uh, Equal Golf Dog um, Golf Golf Disc. So we sponsor the most uh, tournament in China, of more than ninety-five percent, and we also sponsor uh, the largest league for this dog in China, and also the international tournament. We want to make a brand that is a brand internationally, not only domestic brand. Made in China sometimes means good quality. We want to define, redefine made in China. Good quality disc at a reasonable price. Price is the last thing we want to compete with other other, other competitors. So we spend a lot of marketing like uh, cost in this thing. The first picture is in uh, Slovakia. It's a European Ultimate Championship in 2011. And the other is also from that country. So we sponsor them to help them to promote the sport. So here is here's our problem. Um, at the beginning, I said this is our mission. We offer not only professional products but also professional services. At 2012, we realized we only provide a very good product but not services. Then how can we do that? How can we like um, follow our mission? Because ultimately, this the, the game has its limitation. It's a high competitive game, very, very difficult to enter the national market. It's only when you play Ultimate, you can say you come from people over there, um, 40, I think. I think it's a main sport for high school and the university students. When people get old, they come wrong, but they just stop playing. So it's very hard to, to, to the sport, it's very hard to be accepted by the national market. And it is a very, in USA, they have a professional league, or every university has that one team. But in here, it's a fast growing, but still, it's not a well known sport. And we are lack of, lack of experience in services. This is our, our challenge. So we are thinking about how can we do? We need to find a partner. Now, this comes in Yen's part. We found a disc trail. This is Yen's company. And uh, we after the 2011, we are thinking about it for a long time. Shall we choose Yen's and this trail as a partner so we analyze some disadvantage and this uh, advantage? First is the advantage. This trail is a Dutch company specialized in this sport training, especially for the market. This fits us very much. And uh, they organize a lot of national games instead of professional training. And they do not provide this, they do not produce this, this is a good part. Otherwise, it will be competitor instead of partner. So,
So in Denmark, I think it's really expensive and uh, very difficult to start a business, uh, especially when you're talking about the manufacturing. And here, Chinese customers have a preference of a white face. This is very common, like you go to some place, if they have a foreigner, it's a white, especially white, they can charge more. Something like uh, discrimination, but this is true. So we can get more publicity from, uh, from this material. But also we consider a lot of disadvantage. We are not familiar with each other. This is uh, very essential. When you try to contact someone, you prefer to, co to contact someone you are familiar with instead of someone, some stranger. And a huge difference uh, about culture. Later, I'll give some examples. You may think um, something like a tiny, tiny problem that will like, uh, become a huge problem when it is in a real business and a language barrier. Um, and also, the district does uh, not have a nimble office. Okay, give me some examples of our business, business uh, culture differences about plan. As I said at the very beginning, I do, we have a very general plan. Like yet, he emailed me the uh, first time. He want, I, I, I have no idea what's going on, but I know we are going to do some workshop. I say yes, we are going to do workshop. Then I try to figure out this is not a way yet in business. I mean, people from North Europe, they have very specific plan. It does not matter if it works or not. First, a plan. Then you make an adjustment. Here, like we have a goal. Now, I, I don't know the way, how can we approach, but we just do it. That's just, we do an adjustment uh, according to the actual situation. Sometimes we can do that without a discussion. Because when you explain to other people, uh, people will mm, understand. But again, that it seems that he does not quite understand our culture here. So every time, every time he will ask me, why do you change your plan again? For me, it's quite normal because uh, I just, uh, if I don't care, there's nothing we can do. So I think uh, I don't need to discuss with him. So this is this is the first example. And another basic meal, the yen is uh, uh, from South North Europe. So they're very transparent. And business is business. Friendship is friendship. But here, if you go to a company, talk to someone directly about business, I can say you have 80% to, uh, to be refused. If, but if someone wants to have a meal with you, that means you are 50% you, you have 50% to, to be successful. If they can have a meal with you after and then invite you for drinking, and uh, if you are drunk, I think 100% you are going to do some business. This is like a really weird for Yen, because last week we went to Suzhou. I can see from Yen's face, he thinks this is not a very brilliant idea, because we don't know the guy. We have never seen the guy, and this guy looks very, very unprofessional. He provides us a name card, like uh, advertisement, a lot of uh, PS photos with Obama or, or, or someone. It's like uh, advertisement, not, not a business card. So, but I think it's, like, it's an opportunity. We have nothing to do. Let's we go there now and try it. And uh, when we arrive there, I change the plan. At first, I said we go to our uh, hotel. Instead, we, I go to their uh, office directly. Ian was a very, you know, Ian was a, cause not in the plan, so he was not that happy. But, but I have no other choice, because the guy said he can go to the dinner. Like, I mean, in the afternoon, they have a meal with someone else. If I, if I don't go there, then I, have, I don't have the opportunity to talk in person. And we go there, and everything goes fine, very polite, but not a great progress. Then just a very polite name card, discuss, and uh, in the evening, then they say we can have a dinner together. We, we went to a very terrible Italian restaurant. That is, uh, as Yen said, as an insult to Italian food. That's terrible food. But the good part is after that, we, 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 we went out for a drink. And all of us got drunk, then the business starts. 
But at that time, Yale was so drunk, so he, he, he had no idea what we are talking about. So we said, so, in a, okay, in a, in, during the lunch time, so we were talking about something very polite. Oh, you have a very good company, we have a great future, but no actual progress. In the evening, we, we first set the date of um, the beginning of our, our activity, the how can we do that, and also the price. And everybody was very happy, okay, no worry about price. Whatever is that, it's okay. I just give you a price and deal. Then, then yes, give that part, that, that most important part. And then the other morning, when Ian yeah, wake up, I told him the story and uh, we have a deal and uh, everything is done. And he, he was quite surprised. What? You know, we, we, I, I even do not have a chance. I talk to them. And about, how can you do that? But you know, this is the way we do business in China. Okay. As I said, there are like a lot of uh, problems uh, and I mean challenge between our cooperation because we are from a very different background. Uh, but we have one thing in common. We are doing entrepreneurship. This is our dream. It's not just a business. I think this is the difference between a business and an entrepreneur because we are fulfilling our dream and self-actualization. This is not or about the money issue, this is about dream. So both of us are based on a goodwill. So our cooperation is based on goodwill. This is very important. So we can we do that step by step. We start just like I said, we start a very small project at first, and we provide the local support. Again, the not have a base in China. So we provide accommodation, the flight, the visa, the issue, and do our best and to make this happen and then we also the good thing is I graduated from this campus and uh, my, also my partners so we also can speak English so we can fully communicate and Yen is also nice guy he, he is very reasonable when, they, when, when we talk to him some of the local situation he said I understand the culture difference so we can make adjustment uh, so every time we are making some progress, um, both of us have to be compromised. So this is our uh, first uh, workshop. OB, okay, sorry, so the date is changed again. So I did not tell Ian about that. The date is April 7 and the 8th in Shanghai. We have eight students for the, our first workshop. After that, a uh, uh, drunk night. And the other is the, our first team building is in Zhejiang Reclaim Construction Group. I hope we can do a better job later. Okay, uh, this is my part, and then Ian will present how he view our cooperation. Okay.
See, that is actually just the basic thing there. You see? It's just a twirl, simple as that. So I think that was the four day after I did the first workshop, now that they upgraded the workshops. And it was a little crazy because at that time, uh, it, was, uh, it was new for me to do workshop in this big amount. I've done shows in these things, but you don't interact in the same way. <laughs> but after a couple of workshops, I said we adjusted it all the time. It can start to work much better. It has to also to say throughout the workshop, we also teach them uh, basic things where you can use a disc to. We also teach them the basic, you know, the main sport there is in this sport. And you have three major sports in it. You have something called disc golf. Place like a normal golf, instead of you have to throw the disc to a, a hole, you throw it to a basket. You have ultimate, that the, where you, Shenran Yukin is very engaged in, and then you have freestyle. Freestyle is where you have to make tricks, you have to make as visual as possible. That is in where I've been in for many years. It has to be said, I also played ultimate at this golf for uh, a bit of time. <coughs>
ideas. And I think the, the concept I'm doing fits quite well into it. Uh, we are doing lots in sport. I'm teaching and educating and designing shows. Uh, I'm a risk taker because I, in Denmark we have a very good uh, uh, society. You can get a very good job easily and earn a lot of money with just having your job. I gave up to become world champion for developing, continue developing this tools. They have to say I've been European champion. And uh, why is it good for society? It is because with a very basic thing like these things, we give people a tool so they can go out and live uh, more healthy and be more creative and they can get new friends and network. Uh, the development of digital, the innovation part, the first thing with digital, I, I, I have never, I could not imagine I would stand here today and make a lecture. I have no idea where they would take me. When I started to digital, I was uh, on a mission to become world champion in freestyle frisbee. And I was to a world championship in the United States, and I see Randy Silver, uh, one of the top players, a world champion, he doing a move, just like this, I should. Very simple, you do it like this. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I said very simple, it can be hard. Let's try it again, no? Up there. Whoa. Up there. And people they go, wow. You know? And I figured out if, if, he, if, 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 if he could do that, you know, because I had the much more skills in that, I was saying, wow. It's like, oh, and the like the people like here, they got the, the audience got really wow in there, like this. I was like, wow, I could develop that. And there was something that, that, that hit my mind because I saw it as very visual. Normal freestyle, it goes like this. See, it starts like this, and then you make tricks like this. You jump around it. I don't have the right face on to, right to do it. But the big difference from these two styles, show me, it is that they're very visual. This drone is very, very visual. So I went to keep on my travel in America. I went for half a year to Brazil to learn Capoeira. Capoeira. And, and I practiced this concept a lot. And I went back to the United States to show them all these people. And a lot of these freestylers, the top champions, says, ah, this is, ah. And we don't, we don't agree with you. It's cool enough, but uh, it, it's, it's not freestyle. It's, it's nothing to do. It's not, they said actually it was not frisbee. It was strange because I was doing with this, you know. And uh, then one of my friends, Pat Marin, also from the United States, he filmed me and uh, some, one day he sent me this video, uh, he edited I said, wow, just like I saw it. And I, at that time I had still, I had worked with the disc shows in, in Spain. I worked in a club they called Krimbich that has the record for being the largest inside club in the world. It is seven and a half thousand square meters and it holds over 10,000 people when they have made this event. We had a throwing show there. With a very, very professional uh, English uh, manager, they call Manu Mission. And they're very, very good to make visual shows. And they told me what is very important in a show is this visual, is this movement, is that you can see it. And when I saw my video, I said, wow, you can see that, that's very, very visual. But nothing really happened for a long time. Then YouTube came up. And I posted that video on YouTube, and suddenly people, wow, I got a lot of, from China, from everywhere, this is super cool, you know. But what really struck me was that some of the, from the, my community, they, 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 they uh, wrote to me and said, you cannot do that, that's nothing with frisbee. And it's like, oh, stop, it's nothing with frisbee. Wow, I'm doing it with but they're telling me it's not with the frisbee. That was uh, when I realized, hey, there's something that's really good with this, because if I can get some people to like it really a lot, and some people to really hate it, there must be something there. Oh. So uh, I kept on creating it. I started to make shows, uh, and uh, I didn't have at that time, I didn't have where the really false in this uh, thing is. Uh, after my shows, I uh, went back to Spain and I uh, set up new shows in some of the biggest clubs in Spain. This was in a, a club called Nisha. It was with a light show, with light disc instead. And it was very good here. I had two shows, it's very big to have two, two full time shows, so I'm very happy. And then I started to make workshops, and there, there are the faults in this course because it's, you can have a very good, successful experience. You can learn a lot in a very short time. Uh, to master it, it takes a long time, but you can learn the basic, the ideas. And when you can have a workshop, 
where you can teach people something, teach them five, ten things under an hour, uh, and they can go out with them. They feel the people that have gained this, they feel a success, and when they feel a success, you suddenly have a successful workshop or fee. And then I had the, the creation of the business idea. That was like a, a part because I couldn't travel around and do shows, but at that time I already had done shows. I had to travel around and do shows. I wanted more. And I realized I cannot just, there's a certain limit to so how many shows I can do by myself and how many workshops. So me and my friends are doing, we're sitting down and finding a concept for how we can create this into a business that can grow actually, where we can actually earn some money. And we can actually spread this. And we came up with the we took an idea for something, Chakra, it's a Hinduism a meditation system. It's a, you do have different levels, you have different color codes and different signs. Uh, so we, we took the idea from that and put it into our own thing. We, and we used some topic from gamification from computer games and to put in there. So the people that start to do it, they feel part of a culture, they feel that uh, uh, are unique because they're doing it. So what we did, the, the three first levels we have is you are students. It's where you study it, you're learning it, uh, you become a good player, you, become, you know all the basic techniques. When you pass from three to four, the big uh, difference in the level is from three to four. When you go to four, you'll become a teacher. You will start to teach other people, you will start to go out to, to the high school and teach. Uh, the same when you come up to five, you will get a higher certifi certificate as a, a pro teacher. Now you may be more into doing shows. The master is when you can have your own group, your own uh, Jude, as we say, uh, their own little tribe to, uh, to teach them. And a the Zen master, that is when you create a whole new thing out of this. You create a new aspect, you create a new, uh, uh, like we created a light system, or you create your you mix maybe parkour into this world or something. The three first levels is open, everybody can see this. From three, from four and five, six, it's still closed because we haven't graduated these people yet. When we do that, we will open these ones there. The seven, there's no people that uh, isn't the seven level. I hope in, in the future that the people that are in the sixth level will both need to go to number seven level. You need to have a very, very high, you have to have to been playing this maybe for a decade or two. I've only developed this for I mean six, seven years when I started to develop it. So I still have a, I still have a lot to learn, even me in the, this concept there. The testing period we have done, we have done it a little round, we have done here in China, but the main one was in Denmark with the, the school system there, uh, where where we see how what we can do with it. And then <clears throat> We found out uh, different ways of teaching it. We found out different ways of uh, gamifying it. We have also a game in the code. Disc battle is very simple. You have the disc like this. It goes like this. And the other opponent also has this. And you have to get this disc off his hand. You're not allowed to touch it. You can only use the disc like this. You have to go around and you cannot touch each other. And uh, what is uh, very different from normal uh, disc sport here is that this one has a lot of judges. In ultimate, what is uh, different from ultimate and a lot of other sports is that ultimate do not have any judges. You have to learn to judge yourself. So this one here, there you have judges. But these judges always have to be the high ranked player in our system before. So that gives, uh, you know, a motivation for the people to become higher. And it's very honorable to be a judge. If you win a championship, the next year you're going to be the main judge. It's very fine to be the judge. That's you want to face that, that you give something back to the community. You know, it's very important to develop it. It's very important for the community to, to it can live. It cannot be me that's in charge, it's the people that are in charge. That's why we come to, we needed to have an organization. And that organization we call Urban Disc Unity. Urban Disc Unity was based in Copenhagen. It's a, it's a little community that do sports in the urban area. And they also have the right, and will have the right, to, to develop the, the game, this tool, and what they will come. Because you more players that already comes, you more new tricks they'll come. 
Last year I went to Shenzhen, where there's some uh, Chinese guy with name Joy Lu. He has seen my videos on YouTube for five years ago, some of the tutorial, and he has uh, used this in, in the school. So I come down to a place where you have like hundreds uh, of kids that could do all these things. And I was like struck that you make a little video on the other side of the planet and you post it and suddenly other people is similar, doing the same things, assimilating. That's very, very strange. It's a very big, big, uh, happy feeling that I had there. And these kids was already making new moves I've never seen in my life. So, so the more people they get, it's just the creation that, that comes. This tour today, this tour today stand where we, we need a partner so we can come up more. We have all the background, we have done the testing phase. Now we need a, you know, a partner that can uh, that have a good uh, uh, network and are willing to sacrifice. And they have the uh, one thing we need very serious is good products like these ones here because you need a little special disc. Actually, this uh, is one of the first discs that has been thinking of when they have been designing this to this concept. So I'm also very proud that actually I have created a disc or been helping with creating a disc. That's the science of this purpose. As before, we mentioned, a disc are not easy to make. You can make a, it's easy to make a bad disc, but if you're creating a good disc, it probably would take a year or two in the innovation phase there. Yeah. So my ambition is there for us uh, here is to establish this board, establish as a disc board uh, around distros as a country. A training studio for the for students as well as teachers. Uh, have an international organization that can maintain the development of the style. Uh, the values we will do is uh, trustworthy and drive the uh, creativity. So it's very important that we can implant ideas to the students that they will go out and develop them and help to develop uh, the concept to new places. Uh, what it should be, I don't know, but just as long as you have uh, always a constant flow of creativity. And very important is social responsibilities, that uh, you show a commitment to the sport, a commitment to your community, that you are willing to sacrifice, because then you show you're committed, and because we're very engaged with it, we would also like to give you a little thing, and we like the people that give a little thing back. Yeah. So a corporate with the eco advantages and disadvantages. <clears throat> First thing, the culture barriers, very big, huge things. It's like, uh, as he says, they, they just do things, they act. I like to communicate with, with, where I'm from. We always talk about what we're going to do. Always have, we also judge things, but we always talk about it. And here, suddenly, bam, then it's all changed. I'm getting used to it, it's cool, but it's very sometimes, it's like, okay, can I not say anything? No, 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 it's just how it is. Okay. It's like, I think we have to work on that channel. So, okay. <laughs> and the main thing is the language barrier. If I have to continue developing here and staying here, I definitely know I have to, to learn the language Chinese. I'm working on it, but it's very difficult. Even that I can speak five languages, this have nothing in common with those languages at all. Uh, mama, I think that's the only thing, and cafe, cafe, cafe is something similarities to, I uh, found nothing else, it have any similarities to each other, but it's a great language. And then there's law issues, uh, how we set up laws, I'm really out there, in Denmark it's much easier for me, you have a much uh, easier way to do things there, because I know the system, I do not know the system, so that's a challenge. But an advantage here, it is a, it's a very big market, uh, and uh, <coughs> It's a very strong product also. And they have very good contacts, uh, uh, Giko. And they're also very, very engaged in what they're doing. They're very committed. And that is very important for making a thing because if anybody says, I had like this, I can tell like this, for 20 years ago I said this is gonna be mainstream, it's gonna be world sport. People said I was crazy. I said it for 10 years ago. And people still, I still say it today, but today people that actually listen to me, Ah, yeah, I see it, I know, yeah. And I, will, I actually would dare to say, you will see this for Main Street before 10 years. Uh, so uh, I'm fully con convinced that the, that the concept we have in this is very good. It's just 
how much would we sacrifice to get there, to get to our goal target, to bring it out, to get it to be mainstream. Yeah. And which area is the next step? That is uh, finding the right area we can cooperate with, with Econ, with, uh, with, uh, with focus line, because we have a lot of uh, areas. We can do sales, we can do service, we can do such many things, but we need to focus on a couple of areas and put full energy into that. We also need to find a third partner that has a good contact here in China, especially into the education system, because we, we really want to get it at this more and more to the schools. Also, we will find other partners, a, a third partner or fourth partner, that's willing to help us to pay for these services we are delivering into schools. In Denmark, we have a lot of companies that are uh, very engaged with social responsibilities. And we think we have a good uh, chance to get them involved if we can get a school system on an area to help us. And yeah, that comes to the last step. It is same. Very important that we get it into the school system. So, and what more? And uh, thank you for your uh, attention. Um, I will hear now. Is anybody up for a little trying of the test here? We need six people. I will do a show for you. If you have six people that will come up and try, you guys down there? Vamos. Come up here. We need a couple of girls. Oh. Yeah. You're not gonna. It's a. You're not gonna be hurt or anything. It's actually quite funny.
And this is, uh, uh, it's not a little, you can quite use this finger to this actually this is the best. Your index finger. That's all there, right? That, and you put it shoulder under. Yeah, there it is. A little faster. Yeah, let's take this one now. Yeah, you see? Great. Yeah, and pull it up, pull up. Yes. Do not keep this name in your hand, right? Issue 
issue or a challenge because I'm from Denmark. Because for making this in Denmark, you can only become a certain size. Denmark is a, a great place, but it's not for making these completely new innovation concept in service or sport. It's not maybe not the completely best place to do it because the market is not big enough. We are only five million people, so. Uh, I've seen many places where the market in the United States, India and China and I had a, a feeling of the Chinese people would really like this and that's why I came here to do it there. So, uh, anybody who has a question?
when you have something to, to do, you can't do it. You just feel you are very tiny, tiny, like a tool in a big organization. You can't feel like the self-actualization. So, see, you, know, you are also from this campus. You are seeing a family that is good enough to support you, to survive. So, if you have a chance, you can have a try. Maybe uh, in 10 years, you will say, I'm not as successful as those students, no, those companies who are working in, in a big organization or in a family business. But 20 years later, you will feel this is a very good experience uh, when you are recording these things. You have a lot to say. But uh, like last year, last year in, in July or uh, August, uh, we had a new and I party in Portland. Uh, with a principal and uh, I met many like uh, um, alumni friends and they graduated from North UK in 1980 or 1970 and we talked a lot. I have a lot to say because I have experienced a very interesting experience and people want to talk to you. This is a very good feeling. You will find, you will, you will see. Okay. And here also sacrifice a lot for Huskies from Denmark. So, very high welfare country and come here to to suffer from the dirty air and the blue rice They are also eating something the foreigner could never think about the chicken feet. We all don't get that business. I really appreciate that. And that's uh, actually strange with that business meeting we had. It's, it seems when we watched this meeting, business meeting, when I eat the chicken feet, suddenly it was open up to all new business possibilities. <laughs> you don't do things like that in Europe. <laughs> I have never. It's, I really like it. It's amazing. It's a so rich culture and uh, it's a very fun experience and it's something I will always remember. And for your question there, what motivates me? Uh, it's a little different for me because uh, as we have a very sure background where I'm from. Uh, it, and it's, it's good and bad because a lot of people they fall asleep with these secure backgrounds. They don't go out and try and uh, try and all these opportunities. It's like I have a problem most of you guys also have because you come from good families if you can say that. But what motivates me is uh, is actually the this uh, when I invented the style was that the, some of the people, my friends actually in this community, the world champion, they suddenly turned their back on me completely. I fought over and say this has nothing to do with anything. You're wrong, and this is not uh, nothing. They have uh, have nothing to do with freestyle or frisbee. But I was dealing with this, and a lot of you guys, you saw you guys liked it, and you know this little thing, they liked it. So that what motivates me is to try to make a revolution in the sport because that is what we need in some of the aspect. The sport is growing really fast, but it was when it was a baby. Now it needs to grow up to be an adult. And that is, uh, I hope, what we can do. I'm not sure, but we will definitely do our best to do it, though. Thank you. 